Today we're going to be discussing Modbus-based data acquisition with LabVIEW. This webinar will last about 20 to 30 minutes. We'll start with a brief poll from the audience, and then we'll introduce LabVIEW software, development environment for data acquisition, signal processing, and analysis by national instruments. After that, Steve, our application engineer, will show you how to acquire and analyze measurement data in LabVIEW for instrumentation, control, monitoring, testing, and validation systems. If you have any questions at any time, please enter them into the chat box. I'm Maria Lamoni, Sales Manager here at icb usa Feel free to contact me anytime regarding projects and applications we can help with. icp is a Taiwan-based manufacturer of industrial control, data acquisition, data communication, and wireless equipment. It was established in 1993, and ICP-DAS USA was launched in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. We have over 100 R&D engineers and work closely with them to add new features to our products, develop new products, and to support our customers. We're a Microsoft Embedded Partner, have ISO 9001 certification, provide lead-free equipment, and free technical support. We provide free online trainings every month on technology, equipment, programming, and software. So now we'll take a quick poll. Uh, please select a multiple choice answer. OK, there will be two more quick questions. Uh, please select a multiple choice answer. Okay, and we have one more question. Okay, so we'll share the answers with you. Uh, as you can see, for the data logging and analysis, most of you need to do it or want to try it. So LabVIEW stands for Laboratory Virtual Instrument Engineering Workbench and is a development environment for graphical programming language developed by national instruments. It's used for simple and complex systems as it allows for logging, displaying, and analysis of measurement data, which you can easily acquire over different protocols and communication buses. Today we're going to be going over acquiring data from Modbus devices, which communicate over serial and Ethernet buses. With the LabVIEW compiler and libraries, you can easily develop advanced algorithms for data analysis. With its drag-and-drop user interface, you can easily set up customized user interfaces for visualizing your systems. Here are some screenshots from some temperature monitoring and control applications. LabVIEW is widely used in data acquisition, test and measurement, instrument control, industrial automation and control, analysts, and signal processing. It can be used on many different operating systems, including Microsoft Windows, Unix, Linux, and Mac. LabVIEW offers integration with not only national instruments, but also third-party data acquisition hardware, like our icp DAS data acquisition equipment. LabVIEW has an extensive library of built-in user interface controls, like graphs and charts. Once you acquire measurement data, you can apply comprehensive sets of signal processing and math libraries for analysis, 
or you can store the data for further review later. Data acquisition, abbreviated DAQ, is the process of sampling real-world physical conditions and the conversion of the resulting samples into digital numeric values that can be manipulated by a computer. When you are gathering data from equipment and you're uh, gathering it and putting it into the LabVIEW software, that's data acquisition. This picture here shows LabVIEW running on a PC, which is connected to an Ethernet switch, which is connected to a Modbus TCP and Ethernet-based thermocouple input and digital output module. The LabVIEW program takes the temperature data and triggers a fan to turn on or off based on the temperature determined by the thermocouple sensor. You can include many Modbus TCP devices in your network, and the maximum number of devices depends on what's in your entire network. So if you have a great big network, including many, many PCs and multiple computer networks, um, and you have a lot of Modbus TCP-based devices, it might not, uh, you, you know, you might be a little limited, but if you have a standalone network with maybe some PCs, uh, it really varies depending on your layout. Modbus RTU is a widely used serial-based communications protocol that allows for communication between many devices connected to the same RS-485 network. Modbus RTU is widely used in industrial environments and in serial RS-485 networks. They support up to 255 devices in one network. Modbus is openly published, royalty-free, easy to deploy and maintain. For example, the M7000 modules can be connected to a PC over a Modbus RTU to USB converter like TM7561 so you can send data to the PC and watch real-time trends on the PC like in the picture here. An example of a current and voltage input module communicable over Modbus RTU is our ICP-M7017Z. It can be easily viewed with used with LabVIEW through the Modbus RTU driver for data acquisition projects and has 10 differential or 20 single-ended analog inputs. It supports 16-bit resolution for normal mode, which is 10 samples per second, and 12-bit resolution in fast mode, which is 60 samples per second. In case you need to do some simple data logging, trend graphing, simple control logic, show the status on a screen, send email alarms based on conditions, we provide free easy data logger with our Modbus data acquisition equipment. So in case you have an application that doesn't need LabVIEW for advanced systems, you can also use easy data logger. The M701Z modules I just showed you are widely used in renewable energy applications, including solar power and wind turbine monitoring of power generation data. They provide highly accurate measurements and can be used with LabVIEW, to further analyze the data and store data in a file. The DN843i-CT current input boards take in 1 amp, 10 amp, or 50 amp current from the power converter connected to the solar panels and wind turbines. Um, and the current input board, it, it also puts out a voltage, which the M7017Z voltage input modules takes in and passes it to software on the PC like SCADA software, Easy Data Logger, or LabVIEW for monitoring and control. Steve will be going over Modbus equipment in a little bit in more detail. LabVIEW allows you to connect with third-party standalone instruments over just about any bus for flexible instrumentation and control. As I mentioned, it has a math and analysis functions, it has the drag and drop user interface, and many different instrumentation drivers so you can easily visualize your data through a user interface and you can determine exactly how you want to store and report your data. Steve's going to be showing you more on that in a little bit. LabVIEW is also used for automated testing and validation systems. It's easily integratable with very simple instruments or very complex instruments allows you to spend less time addressing text-based syntax and more time solving complex problems. In addition to Modbus data acquisition devices, we also offer a wide range of PC boards that fit inside the PC slots in your computer. They come with LabVIEW drivers and demo programs. 
So as I transfer over to Steve for more in-depth information on Modbus and LabVIEW and for a demonstration, I also want to mention we provide free tech support and online trainings. We offer very low lead times, usually less than one week, and offer cost-effective, flexible, and modular automation, monitoring, and control solutions. Thank you, Maria. Today I will show you how to use LabVIEW to read data from our ICP Dash Modbus Remote Data Acquisition Module, like ET7000 series and M7000 series. They are all supported in LabVIEW. User is required to download Modbus library from National Instrument website. We also provide demo VI program that designed for our Modbus remote data acquisition modules. If you need the link, I can we can send you after the webinar. Here are the demo VI we provide, including some of our popular modules like ET7002 and ET7026. In Modbus TCP and Modbus LTU folder, there are some universal Modbus I.O. VI. I will show you one of the Modbus TCP example in a moment. So as you can see, there are different combination of I.O. can, like AIAO or some example including AIO and DIO like our ET7026. To run a LabVIEW program, just simply open one of our example VI as I showed in previous slide and enter the IP address and port number of the Modbus TCP remote I.O. module. Right now, I'm currently using a Modbus TCP ET7024 remote I.O. module. I jump DO0 to DI1, DI0 to simulate the status of the input and output. Let's open LabVIEW. Let me show you one of the serial examples, like Modbus LTU example. I open the, the serial example AI, AO, DI, DO, VI. To open Modbus LTU COM port, you just need to select the COM port, enter the bug ray, and run it. Let's go back to our original examples. There are several. There are several different examples included in our Modbus LTU and Modbus TCP folder. Just simply download it, you will see a zip file. And unzip it, go to the Modbus TCP folder. I'm going to use this MB Ethernet example, AIAODIDO.VI. OK, I already opened this. So this is the front panel of the VI. There are switch to turn on or off the DO, LED light for the DI status, text box for to enter analog output, and also text box for to monitor the AI status. To open block diagram, we can click So broad diagram under window tab or just press control E. So on the left side of the structure, this is the open and TCP connection VI. Okay, let's close it for now. And on the right side is a closed TCP connection. In the center, you will see a case structure. It will control which register 
the VI is going to display. Inside the case structure, let's use like, the V input register. As you can see, we I create a different case to show different register type, like recoil, right holding register, read discrete input. And then you will see a, a control box here. If you like, you select which function code to read or write all kinds of MOBUS register. Like coils, holding register, input register, etc. To control the starting address and the length of register, they are controlled by these two pneumatic control box. We can double click on it and it will show you this is actually the it will jump to the front panel. We can enter the starting address and register link from here also. Instead of go back to the block diagram and change it every time. Let's try to run a program to read data from my EC ET7024. As I said before, I jump DO to DI. So DI0 should be on when I turn on the DO0. Let's stop it and run it again. I already pre configured, configured the IP address to my network. So right now it's the correct IP address. Port number is 502. Let's run it. And then when I turn on DO0, I should see something on DI0 also because I jump into it. Okay. So as I see, I can see the D, DI0. For all other modules, like AI module, like ET7070, the program can also read its AI data. But right this ET7024 I have right now doesn't have any AI channel, so I couldn't see anything. So for AO0, you can enter your desired output, and then it will show, it will output the voltage from the module also. Let's see, let's check out the um, Modbus RTU VI example. It is actually the same as the Ethernet example. The, in block diagram, it's all the same, except the first one. The, on the left side, is opening a COM port instead of opening a TCP connection. Any question on left view, you can put um, your question in the check box. So um, after the training, early next week, I'll be sending you a link to the video for this webinar so you can view, view it later. Um, if you have any applications or projects that we can help you with, just let us know. Uh, so we will be giving you links to download trial versions of the software, also the video as I explained, and more information. Thank you so much for attending and hope to hear from you. Have a great weekend.